Welcome to episode 25 of Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. My plan today is to create a little flower garden below my bird, which will be embellished with lots of different things like buttons and little bits of lace that I'm going to cut up and also pieces of fabric, little circles of felted wool, um, embroidery, beads, sequins, etc. So I'm just trimming up some pieces of um, lace here, cutting out the little petals, not petals, leaves. They're going to be like leaves on my thing, but white leaves, not green leaves. Um, and then I also cut out some little circles of fabric. And then I also cut out some little circles of felted wool. Starting with some of my little pieces of fabric, what I do is I just fold them up. I fold them sort of in half and then roughly fold in another edge just to make them like a rough little flower with the colour on the outside. And all I'm doing is a little overcast stitch at the bottom, capturing the edges of the fabric to hold it in place. Then I stitch down a little circle of my felted fabric, again just doing a little overcast stitch around the outside. And I do that with all the bits and pieces that I have in front of me. I sew them down randomly at the bottom of the page to make like a little flower garden. So here I have a little piece of the lace trim and I'm cutting it down even further to make a couple of little flowers, not flowers, I'm getting that wrong again, sorry, leaves. And I just stitch them down using that overcast stitch again. And the thread that I'm using, sorry, I didn't tell you that at the beginning, is just my pale grey silk thread, which is nice and strong. So now I'm going to stitch down the first of my buttons using a lovely hand dyed thread from Steph Francis. Um, I haven't used these before, but I did buy some recently and it's lovely to stitch with. So I just keep going on and adding different features like the buttons, the lace trims, the fabric flowers and the little felted wool until I make a little sort of collage, I guess, of bits and pieces down the bottom. Now I'm also going to add some silk ribbon. So this is a, a orange silk ribbon. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble with this. I'm not very experienced with silk ribbon yet. It was a bit of a mess on the back and I kept pulling it through. But all I am doing here is just making little loops that will stick out from my page.
So you can see here I've got the little orange silk ribbon at the bottom of the little piece of felted wool. I also fussy cut some flowers from the different pieces of fabric, so little tiny flowers to fit in with my little garden at the bottom of my bird. And I'm going to overcast stitch three flowers in place as well. My flower is now in place. So I'm going to fast forward a bit now using the same techniques that I've just shown you of adding little elements. I'm going to fill this space up even further. All right, I have lots of little elements in place. I added some purple silk ribbon as well. So here's a nice close-up so you can see how everything's been stitched down. Different buttons, flowers, pieces of wool, pieces of lace, silk ribbon, etc. All stitched down. The next thing I want to do is embellish my little garden down the bottom with some embroidery. So I'm going to do some bullion knots on my little circles of felted wool. I'm using a milliner's needle, which is really easy to do milliner's knots. Although mine aren't perfect, I must say I do get a few messy ones. Um, I wrap the needle 10 times, making sure that the thread is long enough to reach the gap between the center of the circle and then the edge of the circle as well. Now I want to add some green. So I've got a thin wool thread. I think it's an Appleton wool thread. And I want it to be a little bit thicker so I just double the thread over. And I'm just doing little loops similar to what I did with the ribbons. And then with the wool, this time what I decide to do is just a little anchor stitch. So I do the loop, then I come up through the fabric and back down through the fabric about two to three millimeters apart. And I pull that stitch all the way through just to anchor, anchor my loop. Then I do another loop and then I do an anchor stitch and another loop and I do an anchor stitch just to hold it in place. And I end up with, um, I think I do three little clusters of green loops throughout my garden.
Now I'm just doing a second set of loops. So again, stitching a loop, then anchoring, doing an anchor stitch. So you can see here, up through the fabric and down through the fabric, just a little bit apart to anchor it. Time for some more bullion stitches, this time on the pale aqua felted wool. So again, wrapping the thread around six times and I'm using a variegated hand dyed um, thread again. It's like a thin, thinner perle cotton, thinner than number eight, maybe number 12, something like that. And it's in a pale blue and purple hand dyed kind of look. Now I'm going to embellish one of those flowers. So I've got a DMC variegated thread that is a pale yellow, peach and pink. And I'm going to do the painting with thread technique on that pink flower. All right, now it's time to add a different color and this time I've got another DMC variegated thread and it is a much darker pink with a bit of orange um, and like maybe a bit of red as well in this one. So I'm just looking at the colors that are on the fabric and trying to add something that will go along with it.
Next is a little bit of tangerine fabric. There's a couple of tangerine dots on the flower. So I add them with this thread as well. Just doing random straight stitches in whatever direction I feel like. Just to note that I'm only showing you a little bit of embellishment here. I'm going to work on it further, but it will take a really long time. So I'm going to do that off camera and I will come back next week and show you what I've done. Um, before I go, I'm just going to show you a couple of other embellishment techniques. The first one is doing some beading. I've got some small seed beads. Um, there's a few mixed greens in this pack and I am doing a double stitch with my thin silk thread to hold them down in place. So the double stitch is a tip that my sister gave me. She got it from mum and she said that it holds the beads in place nicely. So with a little cluster of beads in place, I now decide to do some French knots. Again, using a variegated green thread from Steph Francis, um, which is really nice to stitch with. And I'm using my milliner's needle, which makes French knots super easy. So my last little thing to do or that I'm going to do tonight is to add some sequins um, to embellish the edges as well. I've got some teeny tiny green sequins which I bought from Etsy and apparently they are Italian sequins and I just thread them onto the needle, push them down onto the um, fabric and then do a little French knot back through the centre hole to hold it in place. I started off wrapping the thread twice but as I continue I only wrap the thread once for my French knot because I felt like it was big enough to hold it in place and the sequin wasn't going to move.
So jumping forward a little bit more, you can see I've got a little cluster of sequins there and I've gone around the outside of that little piece of lace trim that is supposed to be like my leaves, white leaves. So I'll show you a close up in a minute and you'll be able to see the little embellishments that I've done. And as I said before, um, this is a work in progress. I'm going to do a lot more embellishing on this. Um, so I'll show you that next week at the start of next week's video. And then in next week's video, I'm going to be finishing off my flowers, which will be my Suffolk puffs at the top. And then I'm also going to embellish my bird. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Um, I thought it was a little bit quirky, but fun with different ways of doing flowers in a little garden down the bottom of my page. So thanks for watching this week and I will see you again soon. Bye.